I'm going to be taking a look at Vex and Vops more. So let's do a quick introduction to both Vex and Vops in order to make this as approachable for everyone as possible. So I did a poll recently on YouTube and people said that they wanted to learn more about Vex and Vops. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. The project files will be available on Patreon as with everything as usual. So you can grab those if you want. And the you can do this inside of Solaris or you can do it inside of the build context. I'm in Solaris, so we're just gonna work with that. I pretty much only work in Solaris now. So let's go ahead and drop down a stop create. And for this, we're going to be working, basically all we're going to be doing is creating some attributes. This is, like I said, is going to be basically just an introduction to Vex and Vops. You need to understand how to make and work with attributes in order to do basically anything with, with Vex and Vops. That's kind of where all of everything else stems from. So let's go ahead and drop down a grid. And this is just going to give us an object to work with. And then we could drop down a wrangle. So if I take a look at our wrangles that we have here, I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle, but we have a bunch of different options in here. So this attribute wrangle is basically just the detail point primitive and vertex wrangles, but it's all kind of wrapped into one. These are all just basically presets. So let me just explain what that means here. So if I drop down the attribute wrangle, we have the ability to run over whatever, whatever we want here. So detail, primitives, points, vertices. And if you see, if I drop down a detail wrangle, so our old, this is our old wrangle, you see it's set to run over points. As soon as I drop this one down, it's set to run over detail. So it's just kind of meant to save you a little bit of time there, but it's not really anything different. So let's go ahead and create some attributes. So we're going to create four because that's kind of what is going to be used more than anything. You're going to kind of create these four attributes probably more than anything, I would say, at least in my experience. So string, a vector three. There are vector twos and vector fours. You may use those, but I say vector three is the most common. And then floats and integers. So let's take a look at string first. So the way that we create an attribute is by using this at sign. So we're going to do at and then we're going to do my string and we can set that equal to whatever we want, but I'm going to do hello. And then we need to end it off with a semicolon and that's going to just give us uh, basically the end of our argument there or the end of our statement. So if we press control and enter, that's going to execute our code. So I'm going to do that and it's going to give us an error. And the reason for that is because we haven't specified what this string is going to be. So the way that we do that is, or sorry, this attribute is going to be, the way that we do that is by putting something before this at sign to tell Houdini what it, this attribute is. So in this case, a string, we're going to put an S in front of that, press control and enter. It's going to just execute that code and we no longer have that error. We have our hello string on all of our points. If I set this to detail, come over to detail, we have it on our detail. If we have primitives, it's going to put it on all of our primitives. Same with the vertices. And let's just stick it back on two points. So uh, just a quick tip with these, uh, these little black boxes that you'll see all over Houdini. If you press the plus icon in these, I can or, uh, control and then the equal sign, I guess it's going to zoom it in. And then the control and the minus sign will just shrink that down. If you press alt and E that will pop it out. So you can do that for any of these. So same with this one, you can pop any of these out where these little black boxes are. So let's go ahead and create a vector now. So we'll do V at vector A V is going to specify that it's going to be a vector three and we'll call it my vector. And then we can set this equal to whatever we want. So the position attribute here, that is actually a vector three. So we could just set it equal to our position. So at P is the way that you do that. It's the way that you access the position attribute in Vex. So you can see that it's now the same as our position. And if we want to set it to something different, then we can just put like zero, zero, zero in here. And then you can see that it updates in there as well. 
So a float is going to be f at, and then my float. And we can set that to whatever we want. We'll just set it to point 0.1, control and enter, and we have our float. Our integers is gonna be the same thing. So i at i, or sorry, i at my int. And we can set that to just one. And we have our integer. So that's just a quick introduction for the wrangles or the vex coding that we're gonna kind of build upon. Let's do the same thing. Actually, there's one other thing that I wanna cover. Um, let me just talk about this real quick. So groups, this is gonna be important too because you can create groups in wrangles and there it's really easy to do. So, and actually there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, I see people doing it different ways and I think there's a super easy way to do it so that people don't really use. So uh, they'd make it more complicated than they need to be. So if we take a look at our group here, if I set this to points, you can see that we have group and then colon group one, and then our actual value is just a, a one. So if I disable that, it's gonna be zero. So it's either a zero or a one. That's important because it's basically just a bool. So it's an integer. So if we wanted to create a group of our points, we can just do i at, and then we have to specify that it's a group. The way that we do that is just by typing group and then underscore, and then we can call it our group name. So if we put in group one, if we set this equal to one, now all of our points are gonna be in a group. And if I drop down like a mountain node, for example, we have access to that group. There is a like set point attribute or something like that. I'll cover that in a different video, but there, that's the second way to just create groups in Houdini. But this is super easy and just keeps things cleaner. In my opinion, you can also change this to whatever you want. So if you want to just do, you know, my group, you can see it updates the name of your group there. And then the same thing, we have access to that. So that's a quick introduction to Vex. Let's do Vops now. So the same thing as far as the, like I said, the wrangle goes. We have different vops here as well. So this one's a little bit different because, well, I guess, no, you still have the option to run over points or primitives or whatever in the same way that you do with the, the wrangle. So let's just go ahead and wire that up and we can take a look at here. And by default, we're gonna have a couple of different things. So this is gonna be the automated like attributes that it's going to import. So basically you have your position, you can see your velocity, force, age, all these different things you have access to. These are global, um, like global attributes. And they're used all pretty much very commonly, especially like point number. So that's just your point number over here. The VEX code for that is ptnum. So if we wanted to set our int, you do at ptnum. And then now our integer has updated to match our point numbers. And then uh, if we wanted to do our, we could do our prim numbers as well. It's the same, going to be the same thing, but it's called at uh, primnum, as you can see here. So ptnum and then primnum. So that's useful to know. And then if we wanted to create attributes, the way that, or if we want to import attributes even, they're the same kind of node. So it's gonna be called bind. So if we're gonna import attributes, it's gonna be bind. So if we already have attributes on our geometry, we would use this if we wanna access them and they're not available in here. So if we wanted to access like my int, we would import it with this bind attribute. Just take a look at that. And actually we can just wire this up for a moment. And then, to export our attributes or create attributes, we'd use the bind export. So we'll call this my int two, and then we'll name this my int just to show you that we can import those attributes. So if we wire this into our output, you can see that we have my int two and it matches what we have as my int. So I'm just going to just get rid of that for now just because I'm not going to, I'm going to create the same attributes here. So we have my int, 
I'm going to make a bunch of copies of this, so we'll need four. So we have a bunch of different options here. So my actually, I didn't set this to an integer, but it needs to be an integer. That way, the parameters, um, they match up. So our second option, actually, oh, they're all named the same thing. So that's going to gray out our names here. So we'll call this my float. And now we have access to the type again. We'll call this my string. And then my vector. And let's make sure that we set these. So again, like I said, there's vector twos, there's four float vectors, there's all sorts of different stuff. I'm just going to use vector three because that's what we use most, I would say. So we have our string here. Uh, where is the string? There it is. So my string and then my float is already set. And then the way in Vops that we create our, at, or our like values for these is with a constant. So if we wire this into here, we set this to an integer. You can see that it updates here. So if we set this to one, there we go. If we alt click and drag, we can make this a float. Wire this into our float, change it to whatever we want. If our, our string, we're going to do the same thing. We'd set this to a string, call this hello. And again, we have that. And then lastly, we have our vector. So we'll set this to our vector and we can wire this in here. So that's how we just create those. If we want to have access to these on actual point vops, so we don't have to dive in here, we can use a parameter. So we drop down our parameter, we name it whatever we want. So we'll tell this my ints. We won't do this with all of them. And then we can wire this into our integer. And then we have, we should have access. to it on, or let's call this, I guess, my int2, and then we can name this integer. I guess since it's named the same as the attribute, it's not going to show up. So you can just name it whatever, and then you have access on the actual VOP level to actually change that. That's super useful. That way you don't have to dive in, sort of like just being here in Vex. So we can leave that as is there. And then the only thing that that matters for is because this name, the only thing that matters is to actually name it here, give it to like a, a parameter name. So if you look at, if we added the parameter interface here, you can look down here and you can see that it is referring to, to that. So one other thing we want to create a group that does work a little bit differently inside of Vops. That is going to be using, like I said, with the set attribute. So we want to set this to not a point. You can also create attributes this way. Uh, but I think the, the bind export is pretty much what everyone uses uh, in pretty much every case. So let's set this equal to a point group. And then let's wire in our point number into this first slot. So if I hover over this, you can see that it says point or primitive number. The second one is vertex number, which by the way, all of these different colors are like that for a reason. So if I hover over this, you can see that it's a vector. The kind of bluish, light bluish ones are floats. The darker ones are integers. And then down here, the last ones are strings. So every output has a different color. And if I just drop down another constant, set this to like a, the color is going to be just a vector, so it's not going to be any different, but like something like this, a 16 float matrix and nine float, the matrix threes will have a different color. See, the make, I think that changed. Yeah, matrix twos have a different color. Vector twos have a different color. So just be aware of the, the different colors. And then as far as creating the attributes, again, I guess we can use a constant here. Or if we want to actually edit this on the BOP level, one thing that we can do with these nodes, if I middle mouse click on one of these inputs, 
I can go promote parameter, and that's just going to create one of these parameter values for us. And now we have access to that on the actual um, input here. And I'm not sure why that created a vector because this should be, oh, because it's set to, to CD. Uh, and CD is going to be a vector. So we'll just call this group one. And then this should have been a integer. And now we can set that to one. If you see, if you set this to anything above one, it's just going to set it to one. Because as I said, with the groups, they are just going to be a Boolean, basically a zero or a one value. And then again, if we drop down in mountain node, we again have access to our group right there. So that pretty much wraps up the quick little introduction to Vex and Vops. We will build across this in the future. You'll use these kind of for different things. I find myself using them both. Some people will just use the wrangles. Other people don't really like Vex, so they'll stick with, with the point Vops or the, the Vops in general. Um, I find myself using a combination of the two. Sometimes it's easier to do things in Vops. Sometimes it's easier to do things in Vex, or at least it just like makes more sense in my brain to use one or the other. If I'm doing something simple, like creating an attribute, you have attribute create nodes in here as well. You can create stuff through that. Um, but uh, a wrangle makes it really easy to just create attributes or create multiple attributes at a time. And that way you don't have to drop down a bunch of attribute creates or actually it probably has an yeah, you can add a number of attributes through there. But it's just a little bit cleaner with a with a wrangle, in my opinion. And I wouldn't use, if I'm just creating an attribute and setting it to something, I'm not going to use that for vops, or vops for that, I should say. So you'll find yourself using them for different scenarios. Um, like I said, some things probably are just going to make more sense to do it in vops. It'll make more sense in your brain. Whereas other things, it's going to be just easier and quicker to use Vex once you get the hang of it. And you really don't need to know a lot of Vex in order to do some really simple things that really save yourself a ton of time. I use them all the time to just, like I said, create some attributes and set them equal to something. Whereas you may have to use an attribute create for that. It's just a little bit easier to do it in a wrangle, in my opinion. But anyways, like I said, we're going to be covering a lot more stuff in Vex and Bops. I'll try to do cover both of them um, in the same video as long as it's not going to you know, take forever. But um, I will have them available in the same project file at the very least. So like I said, the project files will be available on Patreon if you want to grab them on there. And I just wanted this to be an introduction to both. That way we can kind of dive into more complex topics in the future because it can very quickly and easily get uh, very complex. But it's also extremely powerful and uh, allows you to do a lot of things that other software doesn't let you do. So anyways, uh, hopefully this helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel. If you want to learn more about Houdini, Make sure you check those out. I've got some interesting stuff coming, working on some R&D and different things. So just make sure you subscribe if you want to not miss any of that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.